Hello YouTube, I'm APC. Today I'm going to be making the first half of the two part tutorial, which is the basis of Gmail coding. Today we're going to be talking about theory, while in the second part we're going to be making a simple game with Gmail code. If you have no idea what Game Maker is, then this isn't the place to start. I suggest you start at my Catch the Con series, where I'll be going, where I went over all of the basics of Game Maker. If you want to go there, click on the screen now. All right. So Gmail coding. What is Gmail coding? You may ask. Gmail stands for Game Maker Language. I found earlier that it all stands for Geography Markup Language. So you do not do not get those mixed up. Important thing to know is that all your drag and drop functions that you learned about in Catch the Clown or other tutorials is transferred in G into Gmail. So it's very similar. The advantage of using Gmail over drag and drop would be that um, Gmail has far more freedom and it's very good to learn uh, Gmail in, in my opinion because it's set up in the same way other pro uh, programming language set up. When I say other programming language I'm talking about Java and C++. Gmail code is actually a simplified version of C++ so it'll help you learn a lot more about programming overall. So now let's go on to the tutorial. Create an object. Because I'm only talking about theory t today, you really don't need to name anything. Code is mainly put into three events. Creation event, step event, and the draw event. I'm not saying these are the only events, but I believe almost everything they need to do can be done in these events. Uh, events like collision events and keyboard can all be done with code. Alright. Creation event is used to set the initial settings that the object has. The draw event is for drawing code specifications. So in, dr in the um, drag and drop series, all I talked about with drawing was setting the sprite. But with coding, you can have a lot more flexibility of drawing. The step event is basically for everything else. This is where you'll put in all your functions and all the actions that occur are basically done in a step event. So, for this reason, I'm gonna, we're going to start in the step event today. Go to your control tab and drag in this box. It's called execute code. A very important thing you know about coding is that you can't make any typos. Everything has to be typed exact in order for it to work. The only thing you don't have to type exact are called notes or comments, whatever you want to call them. The way to add notes or comments is to click the slash key twice. It should turn green once that happens. So I'm going to use this to organize the stuff I'm going to tell you. There are four basic types of codes. There are functions, constants, variables, and expressions. Functions. The definition of, of a function is a operation which makes things happen or checks something. They always show up in the color red and are always defined with as a word plus open and close parentheses. Some examples would be instance destroy. This would be an example of one that does an operation. In this case, this one will destroy the object. Another example would be distance to object. As you see, both these turn up in red. If they didn't, don't turn up in red, then you may typo somewhere. That's something that they have in Game Maker they don't have in other programming languages. That's very useful. As you can see, it showed up red right there. That means that I had something wrong with this. I know that between the parentheses, I need to put name of object. In this case, let's say OBJ enemy. 
If you're not sure what goes in between the parentheses, you can look down here, and it'll show right there. No. OBJ enemy does not change the color. That's because that object does not exist. So, if we create an object, OBJ enemy, and go back, you can see it now turns yellow. All resources from the game turn yellow. So these would be sprites, sounds, objects, backgrounds, anything. A third example would be keyboard check. Um, as I said earlier, many of the events aren't really necessary. This is an example of how the um, check button event can be unnecessary. This car this case, you have to put down the constant, a constant between those brackets, of which one you want. Let's say VK left. VK left is the code for the left key. All this together is checking whether the left key is pressed. As I said, VK left is a constant, which brings us into our next section of constants. Definition of a constant is a setting which either keeps the same value, doesn't have a value at all, or has a value that we can't change. Like functions, it shows up in red, and it can be defined as anything. Example. You can make your own constants, but constants can also be built in. A few examples of built one are VK left, as we this is what we used earlier. And this is also a example of one that doesn't have a value at all. Constants aren't some constants that, that can't be alone. VK left is one of them. For this reason it shows up red down here because this is an unfinished statement. Another constant would be mouse x. Mouse x is, is an example of a constant which has a value but it can't be changed. Or at least not through coding. Variables. These are very similar to constants in many ways. You can make them yourself or th and they're built in ones. The main difference between constants and variables is that variables can be changed and are meant to be changed. So a definition of variable will be a setting that let's change. There are two types of variables. And in some situations this can also be applied to constants, but these are applied to variables more often. There's global versus local variables. A global variable is a variable that does not only work with this object. For instance, if you had a cl cloudy over the whole level, and you had a variable saying cloudy, there's just one object that needs to know what is cloudy. For instance, there could be several objects that could be affected by it being cloudy. So for this reason, it's global, so, since it doesn't only fit with one object. So in order to define a variable as global, you would put type down global dot cloudy, or whatever your variable is. An example of a local variable would be, let's say, speed. Speed is very relative to the object because different objects can have different speeds. If you see the difference between cloudy and speed, because cloudy isn't, isn't bolded and speed is, or speed is red. This is because speed is built in and cloudy isn't. If you want um, your variable to do something specific to what you want to do, then I would suggest making sure that it's not doesn't show up red. Because if it does show up red, then the um, game maker might have something already in store for it. For instance, sp speed will always change the speed of your object. If, if you want it to be uh, like a theoretical speed or something like that, then you wouldn't want to use that specific variable. So let's give you some more, more examples of some built-in variables. Image index is a built-in variable. That would be the sub-image of the sprite you're currently on. And sprite Index is also a variable, which which sprite you're currently using, and there's also image speed, 
which is saying the speed that it's running through your sub-images.